Catherine Swift is the president of the Concerned Coalition of Manufacturers and Businesses. There, I got that out. And before I'm reminded, again, PayPal and please subscribe. So the topic today is the fact that we are having many more scientific studies coming out now saying all this stuff about climate change, the climate is going to change, we can do very little about it, and certainly those taxes are a waste of money and driving people into poverty. Catherine, what do you think of that? I agree 100%. What, what infuriates me is that this was a, a whole style over substance issue right from the get-go. Uh, everybody wants to do something for the environment. Makes sense. Of we course. all want to be good citizens. Yeah. And so governments capitalized on this by inflicting all manner of stupid policies on us. The carbon tax was one, but there's all kinds of other ones too. We're, right. we're waiting to hear about emissions caps, for example, and so on. And it is indeed one of the factors at a time of high inflation that is driving inflation even worse than it need be. And beggaring people. That, well, this is a big cold country. The notion that we have the choice of cutting back on our consumption of fossil fuels is ludicrous. We need to heat our homes. We need to drive our cars and so on. So well, we're bad policy for clean energy, Canada. according to our prime minister. But it's interesting that for the last 20 or 25 years, if you or anybody, and I used to be on talk shows all the time, if you said anything about the fact that, oh, maybe, maybe carbon tax is not the way to go, you were a climate denier. Which of and course meant to, right to which was meant to compare you to a Holocaust denier. The right. whole reason of using that disgusting word was to try to make the linkage between something as appalling as Holocaust denial and climate. And there was a scientist years ago, an older scientist, and somebody put the question to him. He says, "All of this new stuff is baloney. We're having problems with the climate because of solar, and it's going to pass, and it may not be the same. But to think that we can change it is crazy." So. Has there been permanent damage done to the, to the economy of Canada as a result of all these policies? Well, permanent, uh, long-term damage, definitely. I mean, you can never say per you. permanent yeah. damage. Yeah. But certainly long-term damage. We've lost a ton of investment. We've, we've foregone opportunities to benefit countries around the world that could use our clean natural gas instead of the dirty coal and dirty oil that they're burning right now. In other words, we're missing opportunities to really help the climate. Do you, are you optimistic then? maybe before another election, whether we are going to have a change in Canada, and we are going to change policy so that we can help the rest of the world and, above all, help Canadians, help I doubt, Canadians. I doubt we are before the next election, sadly, because we've got a government of ideologues in, in Ottawa. The fact they backed off the carbon tax on home heating in Atlantic Canada right. for purely political reasons, that was the first chink in their armor because previously they said, no, no, we have to do this, can't touch it. Well, now they've put their political interests ahead of the rest of the country, and I very much hope they'll be sufficiently shamed by that to say, okay, we're going to take it off all home heating. So, Catherine, fair to say, for your members, businesses, manufacturers, they're optimistic, things are going to get better? After the election and a government change. Thank you. Three minutes. From your comments, I know many of you appreciate the fact that this is where you can get an analysis that you're not going to get in that old school news. Canada needs more informed voters. Please ask your friends to subscribe and don't forget PayPal. God, I just get paid.